Hey y'all, I'm Corbin from CoderPad, and today I'm joined by Matisse from Coden Game. Uh, we're gonna be looking at a to-do application that we built in Matisse's video on, over on Coden Game's channel, and uh, we're gonna continue on with our mock interview. Uh, so Matisse is gonna be our mock interviewer, uh, and uh, we'll try to wrap up this application. Matisse, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Corbin, do you want to maybe show us where we left off last time? Yeah, for sure. So last video, we went and uh, created a simple to-do application um, where we could add a to-do item, we could edit a to-do item, and then we could delete the to-do item, right? So this persists of uh, a simple map, right? So we have a use state, which contains a list of items. Um, we pre-populate it with three items just for simplicity. Uh, we have an ID that we can update whenever we're adding a new to-do item. Speaking of, there's the add to-do function. We have our on delete function, our on edit function, and our on done edit function. And then finally, we have our map, which allows us to display each of the list items. Yeah, that's great and all, but uh, I find the list maybe a bit user unfriendly and slightly ugly compared to other apps I'm using uh, in my daily life. So why don't we make it a bit more beautiful, let's say? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So first things first, I want to be able to add some separation between those list items and the buttons, right? So we can start by making the list item container uh, a flex box. And then we can also add a, a spacer, right? which will have margin Auto. So can you tell me what this display flex means? Yeah, so display flex allows you to be able to uh, handle like wrapping or or like positioning of your elements based on what is called the flex box property. So for example, what we're going to do is we're going to have flex take up 100% of the width and we're going to have a spacer in between the name of the, the to do items and the, the buttons, right? Mm -hmm. So this will allow us to be able to have the buttons on one side of the screen and the to do items on the uh, the names on the other side. All right. So here we will have our class name uh, list item container and then we will have a span now that we have the items on the far side let's add actually a little bit of spacing to these buttons themselves mm -hmm. right so we can say uh, buttons container and we can actually say button so this is accessing the first button as a child of the buttons container mm -hmm. we can say uh, margin left one REM and one REM is just roughly equivalent to 16 pixels. It just depends based on the user's uh, font setting. Mm -hmm. So here we can have a div with a class name. There we go. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of spacing on each. Uh, I noticed our list item doesn't seem to be, I, I don't seem to have the uh, uh, little check boxes on, or like the little indicators on the side anymore, which is yeah. interesting. Uh, and also our, our UL is like spaced way off to the left. But then on the right, there's no spacing. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and add a list container. We'll say margin. So the in shorthand CSS, uh, you have top right, bottom left. Yeah. Right. But when there's only two properties, it's top, bottom, left, right. OK, so we want zero uh, padding on the top and bottom of our list container. Mm -hmm. And then let's do what two REM. So then inside of our li unordered list, we can say class name list container. And actually, I'm sorry, we, we probably want padding, not margin. So let's say margin zero, adding zero to our REM. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, I'm actually going to make that two REM, four REM, just to look a little bit nicer. There we go. Cool. And then for each item in our list item, let's also do, let's make sure they can't wrap. It would be bad because wrapping would make the buttons show underneath the, the list items. Okay. Right, so we'll say flex wrap, no wrap, uh, margin top should be, actually let's again do padding. That's far too much padding. <laughs> so now we've got some proper spacing. Mm -hmm. um, we can also, one of the things that kind of bothers me is that I can't figure out where like one of these starts and one of them ends, right? Mm -hmm. What I think we should do is we should say nth child, the syntax here is a little off, so I might get it wrong. Or my, my syntax here is a little off, nth child one, background light gray oh so so you're trying to make alternating colors yeah Ooh, i have no idea how to make that in css actually uh i want to say it's like hang on nth child dn 
I know you use nth child. I just don't remember exactly. Just look it up. One. It's fine. Oh, you can literally just type in even. Fantastic. Cool. Nice. I'm going to change it to odd so that it starts with it and then alternates off. Uh-huh. Cool. And just to make it look a little like a tiny bit nicer, we're going to go ahead and do border radius. Ooh, that makes it. Yeah. So beautiful. Getting all the. Uh, yeah, there we go. OK, so what's next? Looks a lot nicer now. Uh, we should probably style our, our input, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also noticing that our form is getting a little long. Do we, let's finish styling, and then I think we should do a little bit of cleanup of the, the form itself. OK, so what do we want our form to look. I never know how to style form, so this might <laughs> not end up looking quite as nice. So what I'm thinking we should do for the form is we should have a div, right? That'll allow us to treat the, the container of the form. Mm -hmm. Again, this form is going to be uh, or this div is going to be a flex container, right? So that we can center our contents within the page. Mm -hmm. We'll say display flex, flex wrap, no wrap. And let's say justify content center. There we go. We can now say that the button should be actually I'm wondering if we want the form up top. Let's do that. Let's keep the form up top. I think it'll look a little bit nicer. Cool. Uh, so we want our container to have a little bit of padding on it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go ahead and make it our list container and, and our to do container have a little bit too much going on. Let's say margin bottom. This isn't the proper way of doing it, but it should work. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. <laughs> Negative margins. That's dirty. spicy. Yeah, it's very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll work. It's fine. Eh, you know, let's just be, it, just don't think about it too hard. Uh, and then we can have our button, which is to do form button, a margin left one REM. There we go. Something, something a little basic, nothing mm -hmm. too complicated, you know? Cool. So now what I feel we could improve would be, well, first the font, because well, uh, times it's fine, but uh, it's a bit overworked. But um, the main thing I'd want you to do is uh, replace all those buttons with maybe icons. So like okay. the edit, we could have a little pencil, delete, cross. I'll let you pick which ones you want. So first of all, the font is super easy to change. We can go into body and say font family. And there's nothing in particular that I can think of other than <laughs> so of course we're doing that. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, instead, we'll do uh, a sans serif. We'll let the operating system pick which sans serif it wants to pick. Doesn't matter too much. I'm sure our designers would have something to say about that, but you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy quotations around that statement. Um, so you would mentioned icons for our edit and delete. I think a good place to do that might be material design. Um, so I know that you can do uh, icons. Oh, it's been a long time since I've had to look up the material design icons. So we can find uh, fonts fonts.google.com dash icons. So here I can add a static font, right? We can add uh, our outlined icons. And then every time we use it, we need to use the uh, font name. So if we go into app.tsx, there we go. Cool. We can fix the, the button sizing and stuff like that in just yeah. a second. So here inside of button, I have a class name and then a class name. And this one should probably be done like a checkbox or a check. Cool. And then the edit can be. Oh, cool. It already works. Mm -hmm. There we go. We have a little checkbox and an edit icon. We have all sorts of good stuff. Yeah. And I love the fact that uh, now the button for Edit and done are exactly the same size. It feels right. super satisfying. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I think we should change, though, is that you'll notice that our, our text is off centered vertically now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So if we go into our list item container, we can say we're display flex, which means we can do align item center. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right. Which repositions everything nicely. Um, we also probably want to remove the background for the buttons, uh, and then our border should also be transparent, right? Yep. It is important to note, though, uh, two things. One, I want to add cursor pointer, uh, but then two, we also definitely do not want to get rid of our focus indicators, right? So we don't want to have outline none. We don't want to use like focus because um, that's a huge accessibility concern. Yes. Good. So that's something to keep in mind. We can go ahead and make our uh, to do form container do the same thing. So we're justifying. Now we can align item center. We should be able to. That should have worked. <laughs> what if we do align content center? No, 
Hmm. I'm not quite sure what's happening with this text input. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Uh, I think my to-do... Is my to-do form container in the right place? Oh, that's why. It's not actually on the form itself. Oh, <laughs> nice spotting. I wouldn't have seen that in a million years. There we go. Uh, so we are now centering our to-do item. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Cool. Yeah, I'm happy with that UI. It's looking much more beautiful than... It was uh, 10 minutes ago. Now, one more thing I'd like you to do would be to add persistence. So okay. when I do refresh the page, so it cannot as well. So it keeps the values instead of just uh, putting the default back on. Right, right. So there's a few ways of doing this where one of the ways that I'm thinking of is we could just have a simple use effect. Mm -hmm. That every time to do's is updated, we persist it. I think that's the route I'm going to go do now. Although usually I'm not a huge fan of that pattern. Instead, usually I like to add items to the set to or the add to do and the on delete manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let's just use the, the use use effect until we run into issues that'll make us stop. <laughs> <laughs> so here I'm going to say every time to do's is updated. We're going to say, uh, first of all, I'm going to have a key, right? Mm -hmm. We're just using underscores to make so sure that there's no collision in the future. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I need to import use effect. We need a json.stringify, right? So this won't actually do the persistence all on its own, but it's the first step to add in persistence. What you've just done, if I get it right, if is that mm -hmm. you managed to save to local storage every time to do's are updated. It saves mm -hmm. it, right? But now... Yep. Yeah, now you have to uh, parse them back from memory, uh, well, from right. uh, local storage when loading. That's right. Mm -hmm. OK, so what we can do here is we can say uh, you had mentioned that we're not going to be doing this on a server, right? Mm -hmm. We're only going to be running it on the client. Yeah. Um, so as such, I can actually do some trickiness here uh, dot. I guess it's just get item. OK, so wait, yeah, now since I have edited them, it's Getting them back. Okay, let me just refresh, see if I can test this. Persistent test. Okay, and now I'm refreshing. Nice. Yeah, it's it persisted. Yeah. So this isn't something to keep in mind is that this actually doesn't work like at all when you're doing server side rendering. Mm -hmm. um, so there there are some asterisks here. This is kind of the 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 quick and dirty method that only works for client side. Um, so, but it's also a significantly less code. How would you do that? Just uh, you, we don't have to code it, but uh, just mm -hmm. tell me how you do you do that in server side. So the reason why it doesn't work in server side is because you don't have access to local storage on the initial render, right? Mm -hmm. So it's fine to have it inside of this use effect, but it's actually not okay to have it as our, our initializer in our use state, right? Mm -hmm. So what I might do is. I would either have a, a global store that during server side rendering would actually go and hydrate this somehow, right? Mm -hmm. Like ideally, if you're using server side rendering, you should have a database attached of some kind, right? Yeah. So what I would do is instead of local storage, I would use a database and then maybe inside of like Next.js, you would have get, get uh, static props. I think that's the name of the API. There's a few of them that are pretty similar, mm -hmm. um, but it would be get static props and you would be able to be query your database to go get the to do's to have an initial hydration of your to do list. Um, but let's say that you weren't doing a database. This was just a simple to do app that was only client side, but you still needed a server side render. What you would do is you would have uh, I would personally change from this use effects state here to move it into our add to do and on delete and on edit so on and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. And then inside of our use state, it would just be like an empty array, right? And then we would use another use layout effect in order to properly uh, hydrate the data as we would expect. Okay, sounds good. Did I just break it? Ah, oh, shit. Corbin, thank you. So the, the app right now looks as good as I need it. Um, the code still looks a bit messy while well, we've added a lot of stuff on top of other mm -hmm. stuff. So maybe you can suggest and um, a few ways to clean that up. So I think the reason why it's so messy right now is that we have like a 108 line of code long, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, component, which is OK. You know, I've seen worse components, but let's go ahead and actually create a components directory. And inside of components, let's go ahead and add a full uh, file called uh, to do list item. So I'm going to take all of the code that's inside of this li, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cut. Then I'm going to go into to do list item. 
and we're going to paste. Right? Perfect. I got it. It's going to show up. <laughs> yeah. It's going to show up a bunch of errors, um, which is OK, because what we're going to do is we're going to get to do. We're going to get is editing. Uh, we're going to get on to do edit name change. We're going to get on edit. We're going to get on done edit and on delete. Uh, oh, and to do list item. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Too. So I need to move. I need to import fragment mm -hmm. and then we'll go back to our app.tsx. I'm just going to grab all of these items. There we go. We need to make sure to import that, which means I need to remember to export it from components to do list item. Right. So now it's showing up again properly. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I want to do, there's one more way that I want to clean this up a little bit. I want to take this form and migrate it into its own component is mm -hmm. I think what I want to do. So let's go ahead and add a file of new to do form. We're going to take that. There we go. And then we want to move to do name, right? To do name and set to do name. We want to import use state. We'll have add to do there. And then our add to do right now says something like this. Right, which we still need set to do set ID. Oh, our to do name doesn't reset. So let's do this. Let's do function add to do local. We'll set to do name to an empty string. We will call add to do sure, I'm, like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure what you're doing right now. Can you talk me through it? So what I'm doing is I'm saying something along the lines of like whenever we create a new item, mm -hmm. let's automatically reset the form. Right. So that it doesn't have your existing file oh, okay. uh, name in the input. Mm -hmm. um, and we're moving some of our state into this component since it's local state. OK. Right. Yeah. So now we can actually get rid of this e prevent default because we're doing that already. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say add to do. And now it should work again. Uh, wait, there seems to be some problem. Mm -hmm. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yep, that works. So again, it's not the 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 most perfect code in the world, but we were able to componentize it a little bit. We were able to move files out into their respective areas. Um, and I think that's a pretty good place to, to call it. Yeah, and you've actually managed to fix one little thing that I noticed. You may argue it is a bug or not, but uh, during your refactor, uh, you've, ma you've made it so that the form resets every time you submit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now it's, um, well, it's used to like keep the text in the in the field, but uh, now it's uh, it's resetting every time and I find it a bit more uh, UX friendly. Thank you, Corbin. So I hope you had fun. I sure did. And I learned a lot, actually. Uh, while pretending yeah. to be your <laughs> while pretending to be your interviewer what i really enjoyed about the way you code uh, in an interview is the way you well you introduce what you are going to do then talk me through it without just uh, going heads down in your code and not uh, giving me any indicators of what you're doing. So I really like that. And, and I appreciated you being able to add input throughout the the experience and, and uh, helping guiding me in the, the few ways that uh, may not have impacted like my performance, but were very helpful in, in making me feel rest assured while working on things. Thank you. This has been an awesome uh, look into building a to do list application within React. Uh, if you're looking for more uh, candidate uh, mock interview sessions, we have more on the Code and Game channel with Matisse. And we have more on the Coder Pad channel with me. Uh, and I know Matisse has some awesome stuff coming up, so you'll want to make sure to follow his channel as well. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any other suggestions for things you want to take a look at uh, in mock interviews, let us know in the comments below. Thanks. Thanks, Corbin. See ya.